the last years of the Soviet Union, the country's two leading automobile plants, Zil and Gaz, developed a new generation of executive cars designed to rule the country. They were named Zil 4102 and Gaz 3105. Unfortunately, the Soviet Union collapsed, and these limousines never became serial. In the era of perestroika that began in the Soviet Union in 1985, the country's leadership decided to update the executive cars used. Automobile factories, Zil and Gaz were given the task of making new limousines, which, as it turned out later, were the last limousines of the USSR. I'll start my story with an experienced limousine for the top leadership of the Soviet Union. The development and production of such cars was traditionally carried out by the Likhachev plant located in Moscow, abbreviated as ZIL. The idea to replace the famous Soviet limousine ZIL 4104 with a new model appeared at the suggestion of Mikhail Gorbachev, who became the general secretary of the KSU Central Committee, that is, who actually headed the Soviet Union in March 1985. The decision looked ambiguous. ZIL 4104 at that time was a new development, and by the standards of limousines, it was completely young. Its first copy appeared in 1976, and ZIL 4104 limousines began to arrive in the special purpose garage, which served the country's leadership from 1978. Nevertheless, the work initiated by Gorbachev on a new model of a limousine proceeded quickly, and in 1988 the Zill plant reported on the first two copies of a promising new generation limousine made. He received the designation Zill 4102. One of the experimental limousines was painted black, the other white. Zill 4102 turned out to be more compact than its predecessor Zill 4104. Its length was 5 and a half meters. Compared to the Zill 4104, the new limousine was made 840 mm shorter, 93 mm narrower and 30 mm lower. But the main innovation was a load-bearing body, that is, a body without using a frame. Largely due to this, the weight of the Zil 4102 was reduced by more than 600 kilograms. In addition, the reduction in curb weight made it possible to reduce the working volume and engine power. It was still the same V-shaped cylinder gasoline engine, but its displacement was reduced from 7.68 to 6.98 liters, and the power was reduced from 315 to 300 horsepower. At the same time, the speed of the car increased from 190 to 210 kmh. The new car has improved dynamics. From a standstill to a speed of 100 kmh, the Zil 4102 accelerated in 10.5 seconds, while its predecessor Zil 4104 needed 2.5 seconds more. Between the front seats, the designers placed an impressive center console, on the left side of which you can see the shift lever for an automatic hydromechanical gearbox. The Zill plant produced such transmissions on its own. There were no additional folding seats at the back, which, as a rule, housed the guards. But the rear separate passenger seats received an electric drive of the adjustment mechanism. According to the story of those who were engaged in the design of the new Zil 4102 limousines, Mikhail Gorbachev, who examined their prototypes, did not like the cars, which led to the closure of the project. However, most professional designers agree with the assessment of the first and last president of the USSR. The new limousines have ceased to be pompous, which was historically accepted for Soviet government cars, but they also failed to make their appearance democratic. Now let's see what kind of limousine was created at the end of the era of the Soviet Union for middle managers. Such cars were traditionally developed and produced at the Gorky plant, abbreviated as Gaz. In the early 1980s, at the Gaz plant, it was decided to expand the range of limousines produced by creating a car for middle-level officials, who were not entitled to the more prestigious Gaz 14 Chaco limousine by status, but the Gaz 3102 sedan launched into series in 1982 Volga did not look solid. At that time, the Gaz plant was developing the Gaz 3103 and Gaz 3104 sedans, which were supposed to replace the outdated Gaz 24 sedan on the conveyor. 
on their platform. In 1983, the development of the GAS 3105, which was somewhat similar to them, began, which was supposed to become a service limousine for mid-level officials. It was designed for X4, with an increased wheelbase, with a V-shaped cylinder gasoline engine with a displacement of 3.4 liters. The first prototypes of the GAS 3105, built in 1988, had additional windows in the doors under the main windows, which were later abandoned. Instead of a 4-speed, a more advanced 5-speed gearbox was used. In the same 1988, as part of the fight against privileges, Mikhail Gorbachev, who headed the country, ordered to stop the production of Chaco limousines at the gas plant, and cut the production line into scrap metal. Therefore, it was decided to speed up the launch of the GAS 3105 in a series. In order to increase the interior in comparison with the serial GAS 3102 sedan, the wheelbase of the GAS 3105 was made 70 mm longer. The overall length of the car became about the same amount, it was 5 meters. On the GAS 3105, a steering column adjustable in height and tilt, MacPherson type front and rear suspension, a glued windshield and full power accessories, including an electric seat adjustment mechanism, were introduced. But in terms of the curb weight, which was 1,800 kg, the GAS 3105 was 330 kg superior to the GAS 3102, which is not surprising. The all-wheel drive transmission and the engine of increased working volume were to blame for such an increase. The weighting of the structure was easily compensated by a significant increase in engine power. 170 HP against 105 HP at GAS 3102. True, on the latest prototypes of the limousine, it was replaced with a serial ZMZ 406 engine with a power of 145 HP. Already after the collapse of the Soviet Union, in 1992, the GAS 3105 limousine was certified, and in January 1994, Russian President Boris Yeltsin issued a decree on the creation of a production workshop at the GAS plant for serial production of GAS 3105 in the amount of 250 vehicles per year. Unfortunately, this decree was not carried out. From 1992 to 1996, the GAS plant produced only a little more than 50 GAS 3105S, which were then used in the car parks of various government agencies. The creation of limousines for the leadership of the country in Russia returned only in 2013. The new Russian limousine, called Aris, began to be used as the official car for the first persons of the state in 2020. But that's another story.